welcome. Today we look at how the Word of God brings spiritual renewal and blessing to God's children. Before I continue I have a favor to ask of you. If you have not already subscribed, please support our work by doing so, and sharing the video with family and friends. Thank you. Kelvin is a 30-year-old software engineer, who became a Christian when he was just turning 20. He attended church on a regular basis, participated in some activities. He was an active member of the evangelism group and joined colleagues to share the gospel. He held midweek Bible studies with newborn Christians in his home. But last week he dropped a bombshell on the group. Kelvin announced to a shocked group that he could no longer carry himself up as a Christian. Kelvin claimed he was not getting any satisfaction from Christianity, so he wanted to continue life as a non-religious person. To the newborn babies he was mentoring, that was a monumental shock. What were they to say or do? The person who had introduced them to Christ, was no longer interested in the Christ he preached. Almost all of them started to doubt their own faith in Christ. And who can blame them? The person who pointed them to Christ no longer trusted him. That is a familiar story that is echoed every day in every country. Also familiar is the story of Angie. Angie had been a party girl. She loved to be around friends and have fun. A new roommate introduced her to Christ. She was impressed by the orderly lifestyle of her roommate, and how seriously she took religion. Angie gave her life to Christ and was baptized. She loved church and the new friends she made, but she could not do away with her old friends. So she kept two lifestyles, a wild one on Fridays and Saturdays, and a sober one on Sundays. But her lifestyle after joining the church is the same as before she joined. In fact, her friends will testify that she is still the soul of every party they attend. We meet with such people every day, in fact, we could be one of them. The transformation that the Bible promises will occur when we believe in Christ, never occurs for some Christians. The solution for some is to leave the Christian faith, like Kelvin or like Angie, just drift in and out of the church without being transformed into the image of Christ. The writer of Hebrews says in Hebrew 4-1-2. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Let me do the unthinkable and just cut out the second verse, piece by piece. The gospel was preached to us as well as to them. The gospel of the good news, the gospel of the immeasurable promises of God. In verse 1 the writer pointed to the promise of entering into his rest. You can pick any of the promises that God has given us in his word and fit it there. His promise to fight our battle for us so we should not be afraid but courageous. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you, he will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8. His promise that he will be with you in the water and the fire. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2. His promise of a perfect plan for your life. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope, Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. This gospel has been preached to us as well as to them. But, let us first ask ourselves, did we all hear the same gospel? We need to, because we might not all be hearing the same gospel. Because there is the possibility that we heard one gospel and they heard another gospel. For Paul warned Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. So it is possible these teachers are preaching another gospel. Instead of the word that is preached acting as a mirror to reflect the true state of their heart to them. The other gospel is showing them a look good version of themselves. James chapter 1 verses 23 to 25 says. For anyone who hears the word but does not carry it out is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after observing himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom, and continues to do so, not being a forgetful hearer, but an effective doer, he will be blessed in what he does. If they heard the same gospel as we did, how did they receive it? 
Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 2.13. And we also thank God constantly for this, that when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men but as what it really is, the word of God, which is at work in you believers. How do you receive the word that is preached? As the word of man or as the word of the Almighty God? How you receive the word depicts how you will respond to it. If you only see the pastor preaching, you respond to it based on your faith and the respect you have for the pastor. The prophet Isaiah cried in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 1. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? The bigger the promise of God, the bigger the unbelief amongst his people who hear it. So when Elisha said, listen to the message from the Lord. The Lord says, about this time tomorrow, there will be plenty of food. The officer who heard the word responded, even if the Lord made windows in heaven, this could not happen. He never believed the word of God, so he did not enjoy the promise of God. The word which they heard did not profit them. Both Kelvin and Angie heard the good news that was preached every day in church. But the message that they heard did not benefit them. The children of Israel who were rescued from Egypt did not benefit from the word that was preached by Moses. The mighty works that God performed in the wilderness did not benefit them. For none of that generation entered the promised land except Joshua and Caleb. They did not benefit because they did not mix the word they heard from God with faith. Faith in God's word leads to action. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 to 25. Therefore whoever hears these sayings of mine, and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. That is the word of God mixed with faith. And Jesus continues. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine, and does not do them, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell and great was its fall. That is when we do not mix the word of God with faith. When the word of God says to you in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. What you say is, this is the word of God, the God who cannot lie. Every word he has given will come to pass. So I am going to stop worrying. I am going to go before him and tell me what is troubling me. That is when you begin see the mighty works of God. Your prayers will move the hand of the Almighty to change things on your behalf. But if you continue to worry and fret over your circumstances after hearing the promise of God, you are saying, I do not believe this is the word of God. I do not believe God can help me. So you drown in your sorrow and self-pity. You fail to move the hand of God to change things on your behalf. You are telling God you will depend on yourself to get through this. And things get worse you did not mix the word with faith. When the word of God says to you in James chapter 1 verse 21. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and every expression of evil, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save your souls. And you do not mix this word with faith and flee from sexual immorality, you will be like an Angie, you cannot be a light to those in darkness. Let the word of God benefit you. Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 16 to 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. But for the word of God will only equip you for every good work, you must mix it with faith. Whether you believe it or not, God wants to bless us. He does not just want to, he loves to. God's heart is to lavish us with his goodness. He delights in blessing us. Romans chapter 8 verse 32 says, Since he did not spare even his own son but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? It is for us to enjoy what he has promised and provided for us. It is for us to take his promises and mix it with faith. God never changes. Not one word of his will go unfulfilled. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. God bless you. Amen.